I was surprised at how um, how quickly you all pivoted in, uh, yeah, I think it was early March or mid-March, but you seem to be one of the first leaders in the food and beverage scene in Seattle to accept the real significant economic consequences that we were facing and to really adjust on a dime, it seemed like. And how, what was the, um, what, what were the behind the scenes like on, on that, on your decision making and, and how you sort of went through that process to shut down the dining room and go to, to try all sorts of takeout and, and delivery? Yeah, well, our, um, hold on, let me just switch my view here. Um, our, a lot of my account that I'll give you is secondhand because in the middle of all this, I had a baby. Um, we had our third child Congrats. who was born. Um, and so I had paternity leave uh, fighting up against the craziest time our restaurant's ever been in. And that was really something. Wow. Uh, but in, you know, in February, me and one of our managers went to South Korea. We do this thing every year with our key leaders and we send them all around the world to dine at some of the best restaurants in the world in order to learn from restaurants that are very different from ours. Um, and so me and our service director um, uh, went to Seoul and the coronavirus was definitely a thing. Uh, maybe 90% of the population, maybe more was masked at all times. And there were announcements in the streets and in the subways about the virus, all the tourist areas were empty. Uh, and I think they had at that time less cases than we did in the United States. Hmm. Um, and Jeff and I came back thinking, oh my goodness, um, like our country is really not taking this very seriously. Here's a country with less cases where it is by far the number one most uh, important thing in everyone's daily life. Yeah. Uh, and of course they had gone through SARS in a different way than we did. And they were way more intelligent and quick to act and had experience with pandemics. Um, but that was one piece. And then we had, an, we, we had a friend who owns a restaurant in South China. And, he, uh, and we talked to him for a while on the phone about what it was like to be in China and run a restaurant. Um, and that was like um, humbling and scary. And, uh, and I think these two back-to-back -back experiences combined with, uh, it was really easy to look at charts. It wasn't, I, mean, I don't wanna say it was really easy, but as a non-chart reader, the line for our sales was going down <laughs> and the guests coming in and the line for cases in America was doing this. And it was like, okay, um, when you look at other parts of the world, Italy, I guess at that time, and China, there, there's nothing that America was doing to make us any different. Yeah, so that, that's pretty interesting that you had that, those experiences and that insight that sort of forced you to accept this is coming here. And yeah. We, and okay. And I think, you know, even though we're a 70 year old restaurant, we're pretty nimble. Um, we only have one restaurant uh, that's, we like to do just one thing well. And we do these weird things. We, you know, last, last summer we turned our parking lot into a Hawaiian luau with a yeah. swimming pool and DJs and a way too much white cloth. And, uh, you know, summer before we turned our parking lot into a Shake Shack and a milk bar and for our New Year's Eve parties, we trans wildly transform our restaurant. Yeah, the and, legendary party. Yeah, like just crazy. And so our team is kind of used to like, all right, bring it on. Like, uh, and so when we announced to them the idea that I think we're going to close the dining room and reopen as a drive-through, it was like, all right, let's, like we've been training for this. Like we. What did you remind me when you made that decision? What part of March? Do you remember the, the date where you said, okay, we're shutting it down? Uh, I, I think it was March, around March 16. Yeah, so, so just, pretty early in the month before you were okay. required to close. 
It was before we've been required to close. Yeah. yeah. It was before the governor announced um, that we had to close. Uh, I have the date right here. Uh, when? Ooh. March 12th. Wow. Was, uh, was when we announced. Um, and, but we had the whole plan locked and loaded uh, about eight days earlier. We had the menus written, we had logos done, we had uh, the first week in March, we almost pulled the trigger. And then we thought um, every single day we'd meet as a team with our chef and our key executives and, and say, is today the day? Like that we announced and we had to gauge the city, gauge what we were learning about public health because closing our restaurant is a big deal. There are people who were planning on coming that night. There were weddings that were scheduled in our private events. There were, uh, you know, birthdays and anniversaries. Like people, tr this restaurant's never, we've closed twice ever um, that were unscheduled. Once was when FDR died, our, our grandfather closed the restaurant. And once was when um, the duck crash happened right outside our restaurant. Only cool. two unscheduled closings ever. Yeah. Um, and so, never for weather, never for snow, never for, like we really pride ourselves on staying open no matter what. I remember in 2008, the original snow apocalypse, I think we served six guests on that first snowstorm night. <laughs> and it was a, a terribly, a terrible decision for profitability, but so special to like maintain uh, the streak that we never- yeah. well, I bet they had a great experience sitting in your dining room, watching it snow outside. And, and, so, uh, and so here we are, about to tell, you know, a hundred guests coming for dinner that night and a thousand guests coming over the next few weeks that we're canceling on them like that's, is that hospitality? Is that right. great service? So it was really heavy on our hearts, this announcement. And yet one line kept doing this and the other line kept doing this. So eventually we said, um, I mean, we, we talked to our parents about it and they were like, what? You're gonna do what? Um, that delayed us about 48 hours because they were, we, were we, had to get, we had to get mom and dad on board. Did you have any other resistance internally or, or were you all pretty aligned? Internally, there was zero. Yeah, because, people accepted that, that those, those trend yeah, lines. Well, not only that, but those first, that first week of March, it was starting to get, there weren't many stories of hope. There weren't stories of like, light and encouragement. There weren't stories of, um, I don't know, everyone was down. Everyone was going to work and the two lines were doing what they were doing and it was a depressing situation. Um, and so when we first pitched the idea to our staff, it was the first smiles we'd seen in a week kind of. It was like, oh, we can do something. Okay. We don't have to just roll over and be a, a, a victim of the two lines. Why don't we, and so anytime you give your people a chance to work their butts off in a direction that they are motivated towards, uh, it was a magical, the energy around here was a 180. It was so cool. Um, so we closed on a Saturday night for service. Um, ironically, even though our numbers were down, I think we announced on a Thursday that we were going to, have three more nights of, as, a, as a regular restaurant. And those three nights sold out instantly of people wanting to come to Canlis uh, for the last time, or, uh, which was great for business. So um, we had a Sunday, but we're normally closed on Sundays. And that, that Sunday was a mad dash of building signs, prepping menus, figuring out how to run a drive-through restaurant. Um, so we opened the drive-through on that Monday, uh, and then we opened the Bagel Shed breakfast restaurant on a, on Tuesday, and then we opened dinner delivery on Wednesday. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three restaurants in three days, was a level of chaos, and inefficiency, and <laughs> hilarity that we've never seen before. The um, drive-through, in some ways, I bet for. Well, it was, yeah, and. And I love, thank you, Seattle, but it was hard. The response kind of crushed us. Yeah. So we had um, 
you know, hour and a half long waits. We were blocking traffic in every direction. Uh, we had, so now I have a hundred people online for bagels and trying to enforce social distancing. We weren't ready for that. Uh, we like the, the country was still, there weren't masks back then. We, no one was talking about, like, we didn't know what we were, we, we knew so little. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly we were running these crazy operations and uh, it was delicious and fun, but we were doing a thousand cars and about, we had eight lanes of a drive through It was nuts. Um, it was chaos. E eventually we hired a, a traffic team, but they were a thousand bucks a day, I think, to manage traffic all over the, because we're, you know, where we are. There's Aurora, and then there's Halliday, and then there's Sixth Avenue, and then there's Dexter. And yeah, you're sadly, out. we're just not on our road. We're on like five roads. Um, and it was a giant pain to our neighbors who couldn't, if you tried to leave your house on Queen Anne between 11 and two, it was just not cool. Um, and yet we committed to our whole, the whole point of like, why launch three restaurants? was we, that's how much it took to keep everyone employed. Um, we have 115 members on staff. That's what it takes to pull off fine dining at the level that we're trying to achieve. And when, uh, when you open a drive through for lunch, that doesn't take 115 people. Mm -hmm. So our goal since the beginning was everyone keeps their job. And so as we started a week later after have, after running the drive through for a week, all the rules changed again. Uh, suddenly there were more clear direction from the governor, more clear direction from the CDC, more uh, public awareness and understanding about the disease. And it felt like uh, maybe asking a few thousand people to leave their homes and come to our restaurant is a really bad decision. Mm -hmm. So it was a good decision a week before and a bad decision a week later so that was hard. So we decided to pivot again and we closed the drive through close the bagel shed, um, and then put all of our effort into dinner delivery. We were doing, I don't know, like a, like 150 dinners a night. And then the following week we made that a thousand dinners a night, um, all delivered. And so my entire dining room staff became drivers and that's how we kept all our servers employed. We had a fleet of, you know, 35 cars out of, um, we took our piano players and gave them jobs and made the piano live stream uh, at night for entertainment. We created the CSA program, which was delivery, which is a team of six dining room members that we used the, we used the tiki huts out in the parking lot, which are still there. And we, yeah. built, um, and we put refrigeration down there and we built this whole grocery delivery program. Uh, we created a nighttime staff and a daytime staff. We had to, so we, we made it so our staffs didn't do this. Just so if one piece got sick, then they could all quarantine, but not take the other five teams down. Right. Uh, and then we created- able to keep everybody in, employed to this day? Yes. So That's we still haven't laid a new one off. Yeah. Uh, we created, yeah, bottle service and wine delivery and cocktail delivery and cocktail kits. Uh, we created this stupid bingo show which took off and has a couple thousand people that watch every yeah. week and have musical guests and we play bingo and you know that's three more jobs um so we we opened a general store for merchandise that's one more job that's one person's full-time job is ordering and mailing and so we it was like this moment where uh we kept trying to figure out what can we do to keep people employed to stay safe, um, to do it within the, the boundaries and the rules that this disease has given us. Um, and how do we continue to bring joy and restoration um, and nourishment to a city that was hungry, thirsty, fearful? And it, that was a pretty noble, exciting thing to do and still is. So how are you thinking? I mean, that's, that's um, all incredible. And uh, congratulations on your success of keeping everybody employed and delivering a whole new set of services and products and great food and experience to, to the Seattle communities you guys have been doing for decades. How, how do you think now about, about reopening 
in the future, in the next couple of months? I think 25% works in some contexts, but at Camlas, for, I, I just don't think a fine dining meals is still what Seattle needs or wants. Mm -hmm. um, it's just weird. We can't valet your car because we don't want to put a stranger, like we're all wearing masks and gloves and we can't do our style of service, which is, you know, 12 or 13 people interacting with your table at night. Um, that doesn't feel right. So we, we tried to figure out what it looked like to open Camless under these rules. And it was all a restaurant that none of us wanted to dine in. So we were like, okay, let's not do that. Yeah. Um, at 50%, which is next, I think, right? It's still not a restaurant hmm. that we want to dine in, in fine dining. Um, but it may be, what if we opened the restaurant as something else? Um, so we're currently furiously drawing up plans to, I don't know, what if we opened not as canless, mm -hmm. but open the dining room as something else? Uh, that's the current idea. Mm -hmm. But nothing, I'm not holding the cards to my chest. I don't know what that is yet. I don't know when it is. I don't know what it is. Would that be a, a sort of a, a temporary kind of installation, if you will, until such a point? Yeah, like a pop-up inside our own restaurant yeah. of a different restaurant. Yeah. That feels better than fine dining. Uh, we would probably move our, our delivery operation upstairs into the private event space up here because we're not going to do large private events anytime soon. And scale back delivery and maybe do something like that. We are also working with, um, yeah, we, uh, there's a few things. We have a few creative ideas that are put on hold right now because we're also trying to understand what it looks like to support the protests and support our staff who wants to be out there protesting to be a part of the most important uh, uh, cultural change and I think revolution of my lifetime. And uh, we want to be sensitive to that. We don't, it, um, yeah, what it, so we've, we've changed all our delivery times, we've changed our delivery areas, we've changed the way that we are able to continue to serve the city without getting in the way of cultural change in the city. It, it's awesome. That's been a challenge. Um, we changed our bingo show to not be a stupid slapstick, poor comedy show. Um, and uh, we've made it long, a little, we've made it more about musical guests um, and a little bit more of a serious tone, uh, trying to make it more of a fundraiser thing. And it was pretty cool. The first one we did was last Friday and the public raised, we raised money for um, the Equal Justice Initiative and a local organization called MUST, uh, which mentors black teens. Um, and we raised $24,000 from the public and the restaurant matched 20,000. So in, a, in one hour of a, a bingo show, we raised almost 45,000 um, bucks towards uh, anti-racism causes. So it's, we're trying to understand, okay, so what does that mean? We, we have a platform, which used to be just a bingo show so that people could have entertainment. And now we're, we have a platform as a predominantly white organization that serves a predominantly white guest. Um, what does it mean to be a part of the conversation and to move things forward and not uh, be in the way of them moving forward? Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations on just how you all have innovative, innovated and gotten creative and also shown some compassion for real important causes in our community uh, throughout this period. I think you really, uh, you embody Seattle's spirit and uh, it's been impressive to watch how you and the, your team have adjusted through this. And, uh, and it's, I'm grateful to get some more insight directly from you and to be able to share that out with, with our community and in, in downtown and across the city. Yeah. Seattle's an awesome city. It's been, uh, it's kind of been an honor to, I don't know, I'm, I'm glad I was in this city uh, for um, 
during this time. Um, a lot of other cities I wouldn't have wanted to been in. Uh, yeah, I remember sharing yeah. the same sentiment. With yeah, it makes me love our city even more. Yeah, I shared the same sentiment at the front end of this with our team in early March of, okay, if we're gonna go through this, I'm glad we're in Seattle and King County with great public health resources and leadership and a creative spirit and a resilient okay. spirit. And, I can't believe I'm wearing a canvas shirt during this interview. <laughs> You're on brand. <laughs> so how's the baby? old man? Uh, Before we wrap up, how's the baby and how, how's your family overall? Uh, good. Uh, his name is. Sh so I have a, a four year old, a two year old, and now a three month old. Um, and you know, one of the joys. That's why you don't know what you're wearing. It's I, like <laughs> that, well, one of the joys of this time is as, as a restaurateur, I, I don't get a ton of dinners with my family. It's kind of a hard part of our career. Uh, I've had dinner at home with my family every night for three months. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's incredible. My, my, my dad never got that. My grandfather never got that. And so the, the fact that, um, I don't know, there's so many good things that are happening at this time, as well as some, like, I hope we don't forget a lot of the lessons that we've learned. I hope we don't, um, I hope we remember uh, how special it was to go on walks in your neighborhood and get to know your neighbors. And gosh, I think it's been special timing to be able to start our new family of three at a time when I could be home more than ever. So I'm super thankful for that. Well, I hope you and, uh... And they continue to stay safe and healthy and best to your team. And uh, I'll look for you in the, in the drive-thru or the new pop-up inside sometime soon. Or the drive-in movie theater <laughs> or the mobile ice cream cart. We'll see. <laughs> right on. Well, thanks for ideas. Me, Brian. And uh, be well. Take care. Cool. Thanks, John. All right. Appreciate it.